Usted está ya en la comodidad de su casa y de pronto ve al gordo otra vez y dice, carajo, es hora de en órbita, lo que quiere decir que viene una emisión. Si me ven aquí sentado es porque estamos haciendo entrevistas y van a tener la oportunidad, igual que yo, de conocer a personajes relevantísimos de la cultura. Esta vez me encuentro con la escritora italiana Melania Matsuko, que nos está acompañando hoy, que ha accedido a darnos esta entrevista que vamos a realizar en inglés. Melania, welcome to En Orbita. Thank you very much. Let's do this uh, chronologically. Mm -hmm. You started writing scripts, right? How did yes. you start? Uh, well, I'm a literary historian, so I've studied in university for an academic career, maybe. But then I entered in the Centro Sperimentale di Cinematografia, that in Colombia, uh, I believe it's uh, well known because uh, uh, the prestigious student was Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Uh, I spent two years there studying uh, movies, uh, studying screenplays, but also, for example, costume designer, uh, editing. So it has been an experience very, very interesting for my life. And I've learned to, to tell story in a different way. So I wrote short stories, uh, screenplays, and I worked for radio, for theater, So it was a kind of a apprentice, a way uh, of studying how to tell a story for me. Uh, that's why I, uh, that's it, that's why I have begun. You, you have now a, a long career as a novelist. Uh, how does the narrative structure of a script, of a screenplay, uh, can influence the work of a novelist? Is it different than with conventional literature composing? I'm not a screenplay because uh, I'm not able, in fact, to write a screenplay. But I, I write with my eyes. That's the the connection point with the movie, because I have I need to to see what I write, and I in that way I write in a cinematographical way. But I, I don't write uh, screenplays, in fact. But I, I need to that the reader can see my characters, for example, the the set in which uh, the characters m move. Uh, so I write uh, uh, with a camera in my mind. So description is essential? Yes. In your yes. writing? Description and sound. Uh, I want that the reader feel the smell, for example, and feel the sound uh, of the voices, uh, the language. Every character speak in a different way, for example, because uh, every one of us has his way of speaking. Uh, there is music and songs in my novels. You can hear the music. I like uh, to create a word, a word of words. And do you create this world for yourself as you're writing, uh, uh, listening to the music that the characters are listening to, uh, living some kind, uh, somehow the world they're living into? Uh, I need to stay in the world I, uh, I write on. And I live, uh, I have to live with my characters. For example, in, uh, in New York, at the beginning of the century, when I wrote my novel Vita, who was this, which was the story of uh, the Italian immigration into the United States at the beginning of the 20th century. So uh, when I wrote the novel, I had to stay there. I had to live in New York. Um, I, I had to feel like my characters felt. So maybe I'm like an actress. I need to uh, behave like my characters. <laughs> <laughs> and so on, yeah. Is this kind of uh, perceptual sensibility a talent? Do you consider it to be a talent? Uh, that you can create an ambience just by thinking of, of the sounds of every detail that is happening around, uh, just to make a description that comes in words, which is more, much more difficult in that sense that, than making a video or whatever? I have to, to direct a movie with my pen or with my words. Um, But uh, the most important thing is to feel uh, uh, alive, the words. Uh, not in a page, it's just uh, uh, written, no? I, I need that you can hear the sound or the voice of the characters. Uh, uh, I need to be there, that the reader will be there with me. Let's talk about uh, Italian immigration. It's an interesting topic. It's a topic that has... Uh, oof, That's uh, given birth to many creative uh, 
prodigies of the world, Scorsese and uh, Coppola. And how do you... What's your vantage point? The story of Vita is the story of my grandfather who emigrated to the United States in 1903 when he was 12, very young. But I decided to write the story um, during the 90s when I was a student uh, at Centro Sperimentale di Cinematografia and uh, I was a documentarist and I realized a documentary on uh, immigration in Italy now because uh, Italy had uh, a mass immigration for a century but became the place in which people immigrate at the end of the century. Uh, so that we have a kind of blackout between um, one part of our story and our present. And I felt that our story uh, was worth to be known because we had forgotten. We had forgotten that we were poor, that we had to fly away, that we had to work uh, um, to, to do the, the worst jobs uh, that nobody wants to do. Uh, so we have forgotten our story and I decided to tell the story of my grandfather, an Italian like an average Italian, but an Italian who could be every Italian. So the story is the story of my country, uh, maybe of many European countries that were poor at the beginning of the century and now are, are rich and now are the United States of the poor of the world. Uh, and so I began my researches, I met uh, old people who could uh, tell me the story of my grandfather because my father has died, my grandfather had died years ago. Uh, and so Vita is a kind of detective story because I, I try to, to know what really happened in the United States. Uh, I remember one picture I've seen in, um, uh, on a shop, there was a, a panel with a written, no niggers, no Italians, no dogs. So <laughs> it was interesting to say that this is our story. We were the worst of the world. Do you find any similarities in the way you Italians and we Latin Americans emigrate? Uh, because I think there are, I mean, there is a main difference, and, but there are many differences. Uh, beginning by the the building of colonies, maybe little Italy is more a close stronghold than is any little Cuba, little Puerto Rico, little Colombia in any city of the United States. But do you find any similarities? Well, the strange thing is that the Italians uh, who emigrated were uh, living in country in um, in country, and they were peasants. And they immigrated in, uh, in, in towns. Uh, so it's very strange because, for example, uh, Italia, Southern Italians came to Northern American and uh, Northern Italians emigrate to Southern uh, America. Uh, so we had a, a complex story of immigration because... Um, Your family came from Pisa? No, from uh, a small uh, village between Rome and Naples. Okay. So in the south, in the in south, the south. Uh, and decided to immigrate to uh, New York and Cleveland and United States. Now there are more Mazzucco in the United States than in uh, Italy. <laughs> <laughs> so, but maybe one thing I, I'd like to say is that uh, the immigration is not uh, only a pain, but also a kind of um, hope. Uh, a kind of a revolutionary action that can change life and can change uh, the destiny. Uh, poor people believed would be the destiny of their sons and descendants. Uh, my grandfather, uh, the father of my grandfathers, and every Mazzucco before my grandfather has, uh, had already lived in a poor country. They were poor, they never dreamed to fly away. Uh, the first one who emigrated changed everything for all of us because they discovered that the world offered opportunity and freedom uh, and the right to, to live a better life. And this is true even for people who come now to Italy. In a way, it's similar. The only thing I can think of 
uh, that I can't relate to is uh, the fact that we haven't n haven't ever been conquerors. Mm -hmm. We have never been. We have never been an empire. But Italy mm -hmm. has an old, a longest story in in in, encycl in encyclopedism. Yes, but we are a very young country because uh, only in 1860 we became uh, a, a, unity. A, a unity, a unit country, and we were ruled by foreign people from uh, Spanish, Germany, Spain, Germany and North French, Austrian. Uh, and Austrian, and so. So we are a young, a young country and made in the wrong way, maybe. So the first freedom the Italians. Uh, uh, had after the unity was uh, the passport to live and not to <laughs> that's a strange thing to say but it's true uh, ten, 20 years after the, the unity millions of Italians uh, escaped <laughs> <laughs> flew from so, the country uh, yeah. uh, but isn't it, it, it weird that when when Italians came to America mm -hmm. at the beginning of the 20th century uh, they m most of the times had to change their names. Uh, to be Italian uh, at that time in the United States was a kind of a stigma. Uh, was a uh, was a guilt. Uh, it was uh, to be Italian was a, a shame, also a shame. So they prefer some of them prefer to change their names and to look like Americans uh, and to forget or let forget the, the past. Uh, they were um, not enough um, uh, sure of themselves, of their community, to believe that uh, you are rich if you are Italian and American. Uh, but it, uh, now in the third generation of Italian descendants in the United States, for example, or in Canada or elsewhere, they are proud of their story, but they had to cancel them. It's very sad. Yeah, and, and you play a, a, a very important role in, in the building of America, in, in the building yes. of, of American spirit and, and of um, what you can call New Yorker spirit and <laughs> New Jersey spirit. And there are some, a lot of Italian mixed in it. Just to wrap up this interview, what advice can you give uh, any beginners in the arts of writing? What from your experience, of course. To be patient at the beginning, because, uh, for example, I had many, many problems to find a publishing house. Now it's different, but when I was uh, younger, uh, the society, literary society in Italy was closed, like a fortress, close to young people. And to be young in Italy has been always uh, difficult. So I had to, to wait, and, but, you can, f the most important thing uh, to believe that you can find one day someone who believes in you. Uh, that's the most important thing. Don't publish your work just because you have to publish, but find the right people to work with because uh, for a writer, the publishing house is like a family and should be like a family. If you don't feel uh, at your uh, ease with them, it's not worth publishing for me. And, uh, so I had to wait until one day I found uh, an editor. Uh, he said, OK, I believe in Melania. I will publish the first novel and then the other one. One last question. Uh, you told me what it meant to be Italian back then. What does it mean to be Italian right now? We are living a terrible crisis. Uh, we don't know who we are, uh, who we want to be in the future. Uh, it's a bit difficult to be young in this moment in Italy because they believe they don't have a future. Uh, they are emigrating again. Uh, they are emigrating in the United States, in Germany, in France, in Sweden, in Northern Europe to find opportunity for their jobs. Uh, bad jobs, but also good jobs. Huh? We have uh, good schools and good universities, so a young 20, a young of 23 years old, for example, with a degree or a master, can find a wonderful world, work in Sweden, for example. That's very sad, so we have to build a new Italy 
to believe in our future and to understand, for example, that immigration is for us a great, um, a, reserve, a great richness, uh, not to have to be afraid of the changing of the world, because we need other people uh, in Italy now, and we need other uh, another rep to refound to rebuild our republic. It's like to be to live there after a war that has never been declared. Mm -hmm. But uh, everything must change, otherwise we will be poor in 20 years, like we have been for centuries. Okay, Melania, thank you very much thank you you. for being with us. Eh, okay. Señores, aquí acaba esta entrevista. Nos vamos, pero volveremos y seguiremos aquí en Cartagena a la casa de personajes interesantes para entrevistar de manera que podamos llevarlos a sus pantallas de televisión. Esta entrevista completa la pueden ver en www.enorbita.tv. Hasta luego.